Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent in Canterbury and in this video clip I want to discuss with you uh, a concept that some of the students find quite uh, mysterious and it is about the question why does Km, the michaelis menten constant, not depend on the enzyme concentration? And the thinking usually goes along the following line. We know that Km, the Michaelis constant, is the substrate concentration that gives half of Vmax. That is the definition of this Michaelis constant. Okay. We also know that Vmax depends on the enzyme concentration. So, if we put these two things together, we could come to the conclusion, okay, Vmax depends on the enzyme concentration, and Km is the substrate concentration that gives us half of Vmax. So, if we increase Vmax, we would need to increase the substrate concentration to reach this half of Vmax. But unfortunately, this is not exactly the right way to see it. And I want to illustrate that to you. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at some typical enzyme data. So here are uh, the, the data for of an experiment. Uh, we measured, we had different substrate concentrations here, and we measured the corresponding rate with a given concentration of enzyme. So what I want you to do then is I want you to stop the video and I want you to draw a typical michaelis menten plot with these data where you basically plot your substrate concentration versus your rate. So I want you to do a graph of that and you can do that either on graph paper or on Excel but please make sure that you label your axis properly and so on and so forth. Uh, so please stop the video now and do this little exercise. Okay, did you get the graph? So it should really look like uh, this one here, uh, like a typical saturation curve. And uh, of course, make sure that uh, you labeled your axis properly. So on the y-axis, you would have to have the rate. And it's very important that you include the units here. So that would be uh, millimolar per minute. So that's the unit here that we get. And on the x-axis, we have substrate and millimolar. And uh, so that would be here. And don't forget, a graph without the right units and without the labels of the axis is not worth showing. So that's, that's, that's absolutely important. Okay, now we have our graph. What does it tell us? Well, from this graph, we can try and estimate our Vmax. How do we do that? Well, Vmax, Vmax is the maximum speed when we have loads and loads of substrate. Of course, we don't have loads and loads of substrate. Our maximum substrate concentration is 500 millimolar, uh, but it already gives us some indication of what this Vmax could be. And so we probably have to uh, extrapolate, but we can most likely assume that our Vmax would be probably around this value here. So it would be 100, so this would be our Vmax, and that would be around, let's say, 100 millimolar per minute. Okay, how do we find now our Km? Well, what we simply do is we say, okay, we want to have half of Vmax. So what is half of Vmax? Of course, you got it. It is 50 millimolar per minute. So that's our half Vmax. Half Vmax. And all we need to know, find now is the substrate concentration that gives us half of Vmax. So half of Vmax, that's here. And the corresponding substrate concentration is here. 
so this here and we can directly read it from our uh, x-axis so this point here this would be our km and we read it as 50 millimolar so km in this case 50 millimolar is half the this substrate concentration gives us half of the max okay so now we found our km and we found our vmax now in this step here we just simply duplicate uh, our enzyme here that's that's what we have here our data and that was the rate with one times enzyme so with one enzyme concentration and now we uh, double the enzyme concentration and we know that when we double the enzyme concentration our rate will double and our Vmax will double so uh, what we need to do is just simply we double the rates here 16.7 so we get about 33.3 uh, is a little bit of rounding errors so here in this column we now have the rates that would happen with twice the enzyme concentration and what I want you to do now again is draw the same michaelis menten uh, plot again where you plot rate versus the substrate concentration I want you to do that with both with single dose of enzyme and with a double concentration of enzyme so please pause the video and make sure that your graph looks nice that the axes are labeled and that you've got all the units okay did you get it so your graph should really look like now uh, this one here again you have substrate concentration here in millimolar on the x-axis and you've got the rate and in millimolar per minute on the y-axis now the blue one here this one here that was with our uh, single concentration of enzyme and we said our uh, our V max here that is uh, around 100 so that's our v max and we got a km of 50 here or a half of v max for the blue one and we got a km here of 50 millimolar so that was with the with the blue one and uh, we've done that in the previous one and now the red one is double the concentration of enzyme now of course we need to find the new Vmax and uh, we said okay the Vmax of the old one of the single uh, concentration of enzyme was 100 so it is probably quite reasonable to assume that our new Vmax is around 200 so that's the Vmax when we have double the concentration of enzyme and uh, you see we could probably extrapolate that something like that uh, when we have lots and lots of enzyme okay now how do we find the new km okay we just simply say right and i might change the color here for that okay we know what our vmax is so what is half vmax half vmax is half of 200 so that's 100 here and what we need to find now is so that's our half of Vmax and what we find now is the substrate concentration that gives us half of Vmax so let's see if we can find that and what we see here is I draw this line down here this is again it's the same km it's km of 50 millimolar so you see the km does not change at all when we add more enzyme what does change however is the shape of these curves it's the shape here this is the thing that changes when we add more enzyme it goes higher up it goes higher v max it goes higher v but km doesn't change 
And in a way, if we remember that Km is nothing else but a number of constants bunched together, that is what Km actually is. So Km are just simply some constants. These constants never change un unless we don't do something dramatically to the enzyme. But that's not what we are doing at the moment. So all we do is we add more enzyme. So what we can say is really Vmax changes with the enzyme concentration. If we double it, Vmax will double. If we half it, Vmax will half. But Km does not change with the enzyme concentration. Whatever we do, how much enzyme we throw in, Km will always stay the same. In order to change Km, we would need to change the enzyme. Change the enzyme, but not change the enzyme concentration. I hope this makes sense and thank you for watching.